DB. And you could see them having the insight, like, hey, wait a minute. If we have all of this stuff, and we have it locked up in quark files where nobody can access it, that's not going to be worth it to anybody. So what they said is, we are going to create a mainframe application. This is like a green screen mainframe application. And they told all of their writers, hey, in the past, you used to write one description for your set program descriptions. Now, you are going to write three different versions, three different sizes for every single television program that airs. You're going to write a short form, you're going to write a medium form, and you're going to write a long form. And so you can imagine their writers just being like, oh my god, you just tripled my workload. Why are you doing this? This makes no sense. And the truth is, they didn't really know where that content was going to go. They had no idea that in the future, your cable company would be giving you a digital box that would allow you to choose what you wanted to watch and that they might choose to use a short form of that, that, that title description. They had no idea that TiVo would be invented, allowing you to you know, program your TV in the future and watch TV shows in a, in a time-shifted way, and that, hey, having a medium form of that session description might help you make good decisions about what you wanted to watch. They had no idea that eventually someday your iPhone would be able to talk to your TV and wherever you were sitting at any moment in time you could say hey phone please go tell my television set to record this show for me and that you know you might need to see the lengthy version of what that session description is so you could do it they had no idea where their content was going to go in the future but what they realized is that it wasn't going anywhere if it was locked up in a quark file and that it would have the chance to go somewhere if they had it in a flexible database with appropriate metadata attached to it, if there were multiple sizes, if it was written with the mindset that said, I don't know how this is going to be used in the future, but I'm going to write it with the hopes that it will be. And so, you know, obviously the strategy paid off beautifully for them. The only thing that's making money for TV God right now is this data business. The assets of the actual magazine publishing brand, you know, the, the publishing company, were sold for one dollar. I mean, the assets of the entire company sold for one dollar, less than the cost of a single issue on the newsstand. And that's because there's no value in printing words on paper. The only value that they had was in this data. And so where does this value come from? Well, it comes from the fact that first of all, they've invested in saying, we can't just have one canonical form of our content. We need to start creating multiple flexible sizes of that content so that we can use it in different places. It came from saying, we can't just have a blob of content. We have to have metadata attached to it. We have to have that structured in a database so that we will be able to talk to that content flexibly in the future. And it came from a place of saying, we need to think differently about how we write things. We can't imagine that the only place that this content is ever going to appear is in the one and only one place that I'm imagining it right now. Instead, I have to change the way that I think about writing it because I know it's going to be reused in the future. And so what that means is that it's a challenge to get past this really tightly held connection that we have, like the marriage of content and form. And you see this happen in, you know, in all kinds of publications. The idea that you know, there's no way that, that the, the design and the form can ever be separated. And the truth is, when you look at what happens in digital, it has to be. And you know, sometimes people will, will criticize me. They'll be like, oh, Karen, you're saying all we need is this like, blank, unstyled text, and nobody cares about design. And I'm saying, no. I'm saying the exact opposite of that. I'm saying, I know that design is important. I know that design has to be treated with care. And I know that if you want to do a great job of design, if you want to design a great experience for whatever platform you are designing for, then you've got to be designing for that platform. And the only way you're ever going to be able to do that is if you have a clean base of content to work from. You have to have something that's clean and unstructured and flexible so that you can make the right choices for your platform, so that you're not wedded to the design decisions made by an earlier platform. You're not wedded to the design choices made by print. You're not wedded to the design choices made by the desktop. Instead, you have a base of clean content, and you can choose how you want it to be designed for your platform. And the root of this problem is not just in our psychology, it's not just in how we think about things, it comes from way, way down in the bowels of the server, in the content management system. So pretty much every web content management system that any of you is using forces you to, to connect the act of content authoring and management with content display and publishing. And so because we are so wedded to the notion that what we publish goes onto the desktop, 
it means that you're forced to think about recycling your content when you want to get it onto another platform. And so the, the real challenge, if we want to succeed in mobile, the real challenge is going to be fixing what goes on in the CMS. It's going to mean saying, we have to have content management tools that allow us to publish chunks of content well-defined, well-structured, that then we can take out and do what we want to, combine them in different ways for different platforms, and then push off all of the decisions about how something will be displayed and designed to the individual delivery platform. It means stepping away from our connection to creating content that's intended to be used on one and only one platform, and instead thinking about how we can flexibly reuse it in the future. And so this, I think, this is probably the biggest challenge that we are still working, grappling with in the digital space, which is that we've really got to get past this notion that when you're creating content, you're creating it for one platform only. And by God, that platform is normally print. And it's like, you're kind of like, oh God, Karen, like haven't we really all moved beyond thinking that you know, we start print first, a very print-centric mindset? And if you don't believe me, the New York Times just launched a new, a new section. They replaced the Week in Review with this new Sunday Review. So how did they do this? Well, they had their print editors and designers go into a room and sit around and brainstorm and mock up content, concepts, and they're like, oh, you know what? We're going to have a big image here on the section top, and we're going to have a big comic strip on the second page. And They got it to a place where they were happy with it, and they're like, great, we've designed our new section. And then they took it, and they handed it to their digital team. And they said, here, put this on the internet. And so what you get is something that's been kind of shoehorned into an experience that it wasn't designed for. You know, you can just see the digital team being like, oh, well, um, I guess we can't really use that giant graphic that you're paying for on the section front, but I don't know, maybe we could like lead with the big comic strip on, on the section top here. And you can just see the mobile team being like, yeah, wow. Uh, I think maybe we'll just put your content in a big list like this. And uh, yeah, you know, that, that, that comic strip you're so fond of. Oh, yeah, let's put that like way down at the bottom here. And then when you click on it, uh, wow, it's like, oh, man, let's click on that. Oh, it's broken. <sighs> See, nope, this is not a mobile first experience. This is an experience for an organization that is saying, Let's design something for print, and then let's figure out how we're going to shove it onto the desktop website. And then once we've got it on the desktop, let's figure out how we're going to like shove that onto mobile. And it's thinking first about the display platform, and then figuring out how you can recycle it. And it's like, you know, it's so nice to sit here from our like digital perch and be like, oh, those print dinosaurs, they don't get it, right? I mean, it's like really easy to be like, yeah, you know, guys, print's not going to win this war five, ten years out, like, you know, digital's obviously in the lead, right? And, you know, thank God we're much smarter than this, right? I mean, we would never make mistakes like this, right? Well, no, of course. See, that's the thing. Like, we are doing the exact same thing. I mean, it's like print has like a hundred years of like culture and process and value systems and workflows to go under. What do we have? We've got like 10 years of working with really bad content management systems, and yet all we are doing is thinking about the desktop first and then figuring out how we can shove our content onto mobile. It's like we're letting people get away with saying, oh, I want to have a WYSIWYG toolbar, and I want to have a preview button that's going to allow me to style my content however I want. It's going to allow me to like make it purple Comic Sans, and I'm going to float the image to the right, and I'm going to make this page look absolutely perfect in the one and only one context that I'm imagining it, and that's the desktop. And then it's like when you get it to mobile, it's like, oh man, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that. So when I talk about content strategy for mobile, I don't mean content strategy that says, oh, you should be thinking about creating specialized content that will live in a mobile platform. I don't mean saying, like, oh, fork your content. You know what? Go out and take half of your content and shove this onto a tablet app that doesn't talk to anything else. And you, you know, create maintenance nightmares for yourself because you haven't planned for what your editorial process is going to be. Nope. I mean the exact opposite. I mean, if we want to survive this zombie apocalypse of new devices and platforms that are coming to attack us every day, we are going to have to start with content. Content, not print, 
Not figuring out like, oh, how do we take the print content that we have published in the newspaper and then figure out how we're going to shove that on different digital platforms. And I don't mean starting with the web. I don't mean saying like, oh, let's take our desktop content and then you know, try to recycle and strip out all the formatting that we added into the desktop and then try to clean that up and shove that onto mobile. And honestly, like, I don't even mean mobile first. Like, I don't mean saying, let's start with the simplest mobile experience and then figure out how we progressively enhance that for other platforms. No. If we're going to survive, if we're going to succeed in actually doing great multi-channel publishing, we have to start with content. And that means starting with a base of clean, flexible, well-structured content. It means starting with, to change our content management tools in order to support that. It means saying we can't have content management processes and workflow and tools that bind content authorship and management with content display and publishing. Because if you're thinking about a multi-device future, those things aren't the same thing at all. Like instead, we've got to think about how do you create content that is intentionally designed from the start to be reused? How do you think about creating multiple flexible sizes of a system of content that you can use in lots of different ways? How do you assign metadata to it? Or how do you encourage people who maybe in the past have been resistant to filling in all the fields and adding all the metadata? How do you convince them that you're going to give them a better content management tool to use and that it's important that they do all that stuff? And how do you teach people that they have to write differently because they are imagining their, their content not just living in one and only one page, but rather living in all sorts of different places that, you know, like TV Guide, they might not have even imagined where it would go. So if we're going to succeed, to me, this, our success in mobile is going to mean changing so many things about how we work in digital. And it's daunting. But you know what? I think it's a huge opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to say, mobile's a wedge, OK? Mobile is a chance for us to go in and wipe away years of antiquated content management technology, to, to wipe away you know, lots of like, badly designed processes, you know, unfortunate organizational structures that don't encourage people to create great content. Mobile is, is I think, the light bulb that's going to go on over a lot of com companies' heads, a lot of executives' heads, to go, wait a minute, there's no way that we're going to be able to support creating and managing and maintaining all of this content if we think about it as, as living in all sorts of different places. Instead, what we're going to have to do is change our tools and change our processes and change our workflow to support that. And as I said, that's because if we want our content to be free, we've got to put more structure into it. If we want our content to live in all of these places, we've got to take the time to add the right metadata, to add the right field, to create content in chunks, to write the content differently. It's the only way it's going to work. And to get there, we've really got to get to a place where we separate content from form. Like, we've been doing a lot of work in this space, web standards, you know, people talking about how to separate HTML from CSS. But where that really has to happen, where the rubber really hits the road, is down in the content management system. And right now, we've got tools that essentially force us to combine presentation with display. And in the future, what we need is content management systems that are going to allow us to capture content in a clean, presentation-independent way. The content management systems that are really geared around the content authoring process that are designed to be used by people that you know, don't look like some you know, database vomited and threw up all over the screen, but instead have a process and a workflow and an interface that, are, that is geared toward helping people create great content, helping people create flexible content. And if we're doing that, it means a challenge for all of us because if we're going to think about designing for all these new different platforms and devices, we're going to think about what's the ideal way to create an optimal experience for whatever platform or channel or device someone wants to consume our content, we have to learn how to work with structured content. We have to teach designers and developers how to work with a base of content where they may not have control over every single thing, but instead, because they have that structure, they have more freedom and more flexibility to take the base of content to work with and then make the right decisions for how that's going to look and work and function for their platform. And that's because for as long as I've been working in this, I have never seen anybody regret having this kind of flexibility in how they deploy their content. Mobile is, is scary, it's a challenge, but it's also a huge opportunity for us to make better content by having more structure. Thank you very much.